Hello, and welcome to the show Gold Squadron Gays. It's the podcast where two Star Wars loving gays break down each episode of their favorite Star Wars TV shows while also being gay as hell. I'm your host, Bradley Brower. I'm your other host, Charles Rogers, and uh, we're going to get into an episode, but first, we have to address something. The Uh-oh, really big elephant in the room. By our calculations, this should be our 100th episode of Gold Squadron Gaze. At least, at least if, if my, uh, if your my, calculations app, are my Apple podcasts are to be believed, this is going to be episode 100 of the show. That's awesome. Wow. And what a great 100 to do it on to. What a great episode to be number 100. Like, right? I'm so glad it fell on the best episode of Tales of the Jedi. Because could you imagine if it hadn't? <laughs> oh, oh it, there would have been the same energy as the 100th episode, um, but it would have been a much different tone <laughs> to it. Uh, so this could be a celebration. Yeah. A celebration like of Star Wars. No, it's... Uh, it's really neat. I I mean, I, I I kind of figured that this was a podcast that was in for the long haul. We're, we're both very competent and we know what we're doing. But it is a great milestone to be like, yeah, we have recorded, produced, marketed, put out 100 episodes of this show over the course of almost two years, which is a lot. Wow. I, I think I have spoken to you more on this podcast than you and I ever spoke to each other when we were in college. I think so. I think so, which is hilarious. And now it's on record. Now it's on record. It's completely on record. (laughs) The entire world can listen to us talk to each other about Star Wars. It's been a fun ride. I'm excited to see where it goes next. Let's get into this episode. Bradley, Absolutely. you want to take us into The Sith Lord? The Sith Lord. Yes, we're talking about episode four, where a Jedi Master makes a troubling discovery. Charles, what did you think about the Yaddle episode? Oh my fucking God, this episode slaps so hard. <laughs> this episode slaps so hard. Like, I get it. The only reason it exists this is to explain where Yaddle went after the council scenes in 15 right? minutes and why she never shows up anywhere ever again. But good God, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Like the whole sort of battle for Dooku's soul, the whole kind of even just the setting, the fucking fucking voice cast. Like every voice cast we get exponentially gets better. This is like the top tier of the top tier of who they got to be in this episode. Right. The lightsaber fight is great, intense. Yaddle's fucking moment where she lifts the thing up is oh. God, I I love this fucking episode. I love it so much. It's so good. It's so good. What did you think, Bradley? Do you agree with my assessment? I mean, it was an eight. It was okay. It was no, I'm just kidding. It was honestly, it was my favorite episode out of all the Tales of the Jedi episodes. So I'll be happy to say this right here because um, it really was. It it was such a good episode, and I didn't know how much I wanted more Yaddle until after I saw this because they did something really clever with this characterization of her in that she's no longer just a you know a just a random puppet they decided to throw into the one movie in the background for a second is like almost an easter egg here's, essentially. here's a lady yoda for no reason right Which, and now she has okay, character George. she speaks it's great and also she's just uh, she's a interesting character like she's just actually interesting you want to know more you want to know why she's doing the things that she's doing and you kind of want to get more into her character like it's weird because you're like huh this is a se- i mean i know the episode is about dooku but it they do so much with yaddle in the little time that she's on screen and they give her a lot to do and makes her really compelling yeah they really set her up excellently as kind of like this bridge between dooku and the council and that you know she is a hand that is reached out to him that if he would take it the events of the clone wars could be averted right. that if he would only make peace with the council this could be a averted and he instead chooses to slice that hand off and it's a sort of big turning point in Dooku's character of where he goes from just working with Darth Sidious to 
to fully joining him and fully committing now that, you know, it's the point of no return. He can't go back. And another thing that I like that they did with this character as well um, with Yaddle is that they, in the voice acting, when they made her speak normally, we'll call it no backwards speak or whatever we call Yoda's speech pattern. This opens up the door for, because we don't know what Grogu sounds like because he doesn't speak, but because he's mute, but the... He's a baby. Right. And he makes he, baby noises. He, well, he makes baby noises. But the fact that she speaks in a kind of regular speech pattern opens up the fact that like, okay, what Yoda's doing is a character trait for Yoda. And then that means that Grogu doesn't have to speak that way. She doesn't have to speak that way. And if they ever bring any other of this species into the series, they don't have to speak that way either. Like you're not pigeonholing yourself into this backwards speak, which is really clever. Fans of the High Republic already knew that Yaddle speaks normally uh, because she does have a brief cameo in Out of the Shadows by Justina Ireland and she does speak normally in that but yes gotcha. this is full on like visual confirmation that Yaddle speaks normally not every member of Yoda species talks like that. I have heard people have mentioned to me that Yoda speaks that way as a tribute to his master and I think that may still be a canonical fact but I've never been able to find where that's actually from and what I can source to that. Um, I have heard from reliable sources that that was Frank Oz's like mental backstory for the character but I'm not sure if that's been incorporated into canon or, or why Yoda talks like that. Speaking of the voices uh, <laughs> Perfect transition yeah. Oh uh, I'm I'm getting good at these. Uh, do you want to hear about our fucking stellar voice cast? Yeah Who who's in this episode that is important? Well uh, we have Meg Marchand is the voice of the Jedi Temple Archive. Uh, Meg Marchand just looks like a crew member. She's normally uh, behind the camera. She's a production coordinator on Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars The Bad Batch. In 2020 and 2021, this is likely just a voice cameo for her, which, if that's the case, is cool and neat, and that's yeah. awesome. We love to see that. Uh, Jocasta New is being voiced by Flo D. Ray. Uh, Flo D. Ray has been in, has been Jocasta New in The Clone Wars, uh, also was Jocasta New's voice in Tales of the Jedi, uh, did a couple of voices in Avatar The Last Airbender, um, not a whole lot here that I recognize. The other four characters are who we need to talk about. Okay. So we have returning as uh, Count Dooku, again, the incomparable Corey Burton. Qui-Gon Jinn makes a brief appearance. Qui-Gon Jinn is being voiced by an actor called uh, named Liam Neeson. Okay. Just Liam Neeson, person. he's been in Schindler's List. Uh, most people know him from Taken. And he was in a little movie called Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace as Qui-Gon Jinn. I like it, I like it. He's also in Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi playing Qui-Gon Jinn. So he he seems to enjoy coming back. And he's in Rise of Skywalker, also as Qui-Gon Jinn. So he's played him a few times. Yaddle is being voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard. We know Bryce Dallas Howard from directing the best episodes of The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. Uh, she is Ron Howard, the director of Solo's Daughter. She is Claire in the Jurassic World franchise. Those are the, the main things that she's known for. Um, Love her. And then finally, rounding out our voice cast with Darth Sidious. Darth Sidious is being voiced by Ian McDermott. Ian McDermott, very prolific stage and screen actor, best known for playing <laughs> Palpatine in the prequel films Return of the Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Love He's also it. been Palpatine in Star Wars Rebels. He's been Palpatine in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, just off the top of my head, other places as he's played Palpatine, but he's had a really, really like intensive stage and screen journey as well. Uh, he's in my favorite Halloween movie, which is the Sleepy Hollow movie directed by Tim Burton. Um, but he's been in just a lot of things. He's a very prolific British actor. He's been playing Palpatine since 1983 and absolutely fucking loves being this character. I do love that. Stellar voice cast. My God. Well, they definitely stacked this one, right? Like they knew that there were certain little things that they wanted to throw in there, which were great. Which let's talk about some of the events that are happening in this episode because they're kind of important. Let's 
start off with the first kind of event that happens, which well, is... Well, I actually need to go back and talk about an event that happened before this episode started. Oh, okay. So there is some confusion about where this falls in the timeline. Gotcha. Dooku Jedi Lost established that Dooku left the Jedi Order prior to, significantly prior to the events of Phantom Menace. Okay. However, Padawan by Kirsten White, which came out recently, did establish that Dooku regularly visits the temple to speak to Jedi Masters and the Jedi Council. Okay. So it's if you're only watching the visual media, you might think that Dooku's still a member of the Order. And I do feel like we will get to it in a later episode. Dave Filoni doesn't bother to check what other creatives have actually done with things before he does stuff. Mostly, I'm just really bitter about episode six. I, I think the way that this is written is that it's supposed to be that if you've only seen the visual media, you just assume Dooku's still a part of the Order at this point. Uh, but if you watch with the knowledge of Dooku Jedi Lost, you understand that, yeah, no, he's he's left the Order. He's just visiting the temple. So I okay. needed to clear that up. Gotcha. Yeah, because one of the first things that happens in this episode is everybody's talking about the fact that, well, actually, sorry, I'll, we'll go back a little earlier than that. Uh, Dooku randomly does something that uh, coincides sides with something that happens uh, later on in Attack of the Clones, which is they're like, hmm, there's no planet that exists by this name. And that's a very popular... We see him delete the, the we Camino, see him delete the Camino files, right? That's, so that's even more interesting that you say that he's not a part of the Order and he's coming into the library just as Joe Schmo, and then he goes into the secret vault section of the library and uses some random password that he got from, a, I'm assuming, a Jedi that died slash he killed like doesn't i don't really know what Sifo, the story doesn't he use sifo ds's password right but i've always been confused Sifo about DS's that password like okay I've always so been super short version super short version sifo ds is the name that is dropped by the kaminoans in attack of the clones as the jedi who commissions the clone army we find out in uh so it was the Clone Wars, the Sifo-Dyas commissioned this army, and then sifo was killed. Dooku is using, sifo is dead at this point, Dooku is using sifo basically codes, but he can also walk around because Dude used to be on the Jedi Council. Dude was a Jedi Master, and the relationship between him and Yoda at this point is such that, yeah, nobody sees Dooku as like an evil person. They see he's just a guy who left the Jedi Order, and they're treating him with much more respect than, for example, they will treat Ahsoka at the end of the Clone Wars. However, you know, Ahsoka wasn't even a knight. She was a Padawan. That was, it was, it's very different scenarios. But because of Dooku's standing in the order, he is allowed to sort of walk around and do these things. He gets to carry his lightsaber. That was the other thing I wanted he to mention. He gets to like, carry, he, yeah, they don't take his lightsaber has it. away. No, Would you they, think that would be like they a let him keep no it. brainer? Yeah, that's a they weird They let him keep it. Yoda lets choice. him keep it. Because again, um, he's a master. He's been a member of the Jedi order for like 60 years when he leaves. They're, they're gonna let him keep his stuff and they're all friends with him um so after he deletes the stuff the the, the planet the codes, whatever, name. right yeah he, he goes up to jacasa new and he's like everybody uh, seems to be in a fluster about some random event that just recently happened and apparently uh his old apprentice uh, qui-gon jinn just ran into a sith lord on some backwater planet called tatooine oh <gasps> gas <laughs> gay gasp um so timeline wise i'm confused because i'm assuming this is taking place during the phantom menace movie during the events of the phantom menace so, so there's a part the where he comes back sequence takes place right after like during that bit where qui-gon is trying to get them to train anakin and before he leaves to go back to naboo and then it jumps ahead to after the fight with darth maul before the council or like the whole like uh funeral or not funeral the the triumphant processional mark no it is before the funeral before the funeral of qui-gon so it's right there in the movie is where this is taking place okay so if you were to go back and try to piecemeal these together and watch a really weird thing you'd have to watch this in the middle of the phantom menace at some point yeah just to kind of like i believe if i'm remembering my editing of the phantom menace correctly it's qui-gon dies in obi-wan's arms and you'd immediately jump back to this because i believe it cuts to the funeral right after gotcha but well, look up the movie well because qui-gon's walking with yaddle and then they're talking about it and then right. he like he sees him he's like oh uh i'm not gonna be there to protect you if you run and into then him again or something 
immediately dies. Right. Yeah, like six <laughs> hours later, Qui-Gon's dead. Right, which is the rest of The Phantom Menace, I guess. So that's right. an interesting, it's just weird that this episode does a little bit of time jumping because it does do that for like, I guess the first couple minutes is before and then he immediately dies and then it's like, okay, Dooku's really disillusioned now if you're if he wasn't already before. Well, Qui-Gon was like the only person who sort of understood him and understood like the way that Dooku sees the Jedi Order and sees his idealism. And Qui-Gon was one of the only people who could balance that. And I think Qui-Gon was a very stabilizing influence for Dooku. And with Qui-Gon removed, that stabilizing influence is gone. Even though Dooku was already slipping down a dark path, as we can see from when he deletes Kamino and what is revealed in the rest of the episode um so i like how in this they also not that they are retconning but they're like using the movies as kind of like the excuses for what things are happening in this episode Right. Dooku goes to the I will call it the secret base or whatever that is in the uh Revenge goes to of the, the works movie. district in Coruscant to have right. a secret meeting with Darth Sidious and I just like that it's the same place that is in the movie like it's just the same exact well, place yeah because if there's one thing Dave Filoni knows how to do really really well it's like build off of the movies while keeping all of that same iconography I also just I love the works like I love this particular location generally mm-hmm. so I was just, I was delighted the fight took place there. I also like how the door is used as a set piece, even though like I, it's like such an iconic part of that building. These doors with like it almost looks like a gear that kind of yep. op- the door opens up, and I like how they even made it a part of the episode where you know the we think the door crushes Yaddle and then it doesn't. Um, which I want to talk about that part because I think the first time I watched this, I audibly gasped because I was so like into the episode, and when I because I didn't know what happened to Yaddle right as a casual you know kind of viewer. I didn't know what happened to Yaddle she literally just disappeared right they don't talk about her ever right they don't She's talk about Phantom her ever. for three seconds right so when I saw her quote unquote die by the door crushing her I audibly gasped and I was like oh my god this is terrible that is the most brutal execution I've seen in a Star Wars just getting crazy. absolutely crushed by a door and then yeah she like pushes her way out of it which is cool and rad however I don't understand why she didn't do the opposite of what she did which was fall backwards instead of forwards because if you fall backwards then the door will shut and then because you can the escape. plot needs to happen <laughs> because the plot needs to happen i know i know i know but it was just like girl what are you doing like now you just trapped she was also probably leaning forward so once she got the door up you could see she was so exhausted that she was basically going to fall whatever direction she was leaning and the way she was having to hold the thing up or she was sort of bent over yeah. i don't know i'm just making excuses at this point no of course of course but yeah, i really like that's it part of my job on this show but it also brings up another another interesting thing which is yaddle was not there during order 66 which Correct. means she was not there to get grogu out or whatever you know how we, it we, wasn't yaddle it wasn't yaddle so I that puts to bed it was it I puts to bed I that that rumor which i know for a while people thought that, that was, was like a the rumor? thing yeah because people were like well she's obviously because she's the same species so it obviously had to be her that rescued grogu i because have never heard that and i've but heard just about every stupid rumor it was a pretty stupid rumor. i'm glad that it wasn't her uh but also because it seems almost like too obvious or whatever like what because she happens to be the same species i like that it explains why she's not there during order 66 that we didn't see but also now i want to know like did they notice she was gone or is this happening so close to the events of of Attack of the Clones that they just kind of forget about. I would be interested to see some follow-up from this. I I want more Yaddle just in general as a character because she's a very interesting character. Yeah. Um, Don't love that they gave her characterization to immediately kill her off. That is the one thing I think that I didn't like necessarily. And I think this can be rectified by just having more Yaddle content prior to this. Uh, I think that that was one thing that I'm sort of keeping my eye on because I'd like to see them do more Yaddo content so it doesn't feel like oh she has character now she has to die right. which does kind of suck it it sucks too because she like we we see here Dooku still has his kind of like black hair which I'll you know so he's not white you know 
at in Attack of the Clones mode yet, where he's got he's gone full. Well, yeah, light. we're nine years prior, and I think he's got right. a little bit of gray in it. It, it does, you do notice it is it's kind a of little slightly gray. gray. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're not quite there yet, so it feels like there's still a lot they could play with there, at least on his character of stuff he's doing, you know, off screen during the 10 year gap between phantom menace and attack of the clones that would be interesting to kind of go into but um overall i do want them to bring yaddle back in some capacity although please i Phase worry the high republic let's go oh you mean like that early on yeah how old is she? yoda's 900 years old in return of the jedi that's true i guess they could pick they don't have to pick like a year before this happens they even if yaddle's 400 years yeah. she's still yeah. gonna be a jedi she's literally in the high republic phase one okay that's how that works i i was just worried that if they brought her back they would do something where she's interacting with grogu because they can and i don't know if i want that because i don't know if i want to see grogu outside of his current timeline you know what i mean like i feel like he it's too much if we show him early on because then it takes away from his character this traumatized you know baby yeah it's it's very (laughs) we're putting him in all the things because he's merchandisable and people will watch it right and i i do worry that that'll happen i mean okay i shouldn't say i'm worried that it'll happen it's going to buy the fucking funko it's it's going to happen i've seen your look i've seen your grogu shelf like not in person yeah. but over over webcam i've seen your grogu shelf you'll buy the fucking funko pops as soon as they come out it's it's going to happen i know it will happen i'm just saying it's inevitable uh <laughs> But it's just like we're counting down the days, right? Well, do you have any final thoughts on this episode, Bradley? Um, final you had a thoughts. lot to say about this one. I yeah, I got to let sat back and let you do the notes for this one. <laughs> yeah, this one will. This one was just. I felt like they gave us. It wasn't just a Dooku episode, which is why it was so good because they gave us a lot of characterization of Yaddle. They gave us a little bit more Qui Gon. You know, we got to see some Sidious. We got to see you know other stuff, other characters, more interesting things. And and the stuff that they have with Dooku is great because it shows like he is doing all of this stuff because he thinks Sidious can help him achieve his goal. It's not necessarily that he's helping Sidious achieve Sidious's goal, you know? So it's very interesting to see that side where it's like, oh, you said that Qui-Gon would, you know, be with us. Like he would be a part of our thing. You know what I mean? He's like, no, that was only going to help you. It wasn't going to help me. I lost an apprentice and you lost an apprentice. So we're even now, you know, it's kind of just like weird characterization, but you're like, whoa, maybe he's not all bad i guess is the interesting take from this yeah i definitely think that this rounds out dooku's you know character arc over the course of it going from this idealist this extreme idealist in justice to somebody who's starting to drift away from the jedi order he's starting to let their idealism take them over and take them on a different path and choices and then finally in the sith lord we see where that path has led and that path has led to sidious and even then he's not fully committed but we will see that he is fully committed by the time of attack of the clones that he is masquerading as this political idealist figure when in reality, you know, he is a Sith Lord who is doing whatever he's doing to achieve his personal goals. Um, My final thought on the episode is that Ian McDermott is a delight and every time he voices Palpatine or Sidious, he's clearly having a ball. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, Bradley, congratulations once again on putting up with my shit for 100 episodes. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure this has been a trying experience for you. Getting too old. You are younger than I am. You're not that much younger than I am, but you are younger than I am. Shut up. Uh, well, go ahead and run the socials then, and let's go into episode 101. Thank you for listening to Gold Squadron Gaze. Did Charles fuck something up? Send us a message at goldsquadrongaze at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Gold Squad Gaze. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Gold Squadron Gaze. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Gold Squadron Gaze, where we post the podcast as well as exclusive content. Please join us next week and every week for more of Gold Squadron Gaze. 